Good morning, my fellow wizards and witches. That's better, it... <laughs> oh, good morning, Alex. <laughs> I hope you're doing well today. Yes, I could, I'm sure you can see we have several new uh, channel point rewards for the uh, for the stream today. Uh, I thought we would be able to go through those when we get a few more people to join us after we've finished chapter one. I'll explain what we'll be doing for the uh, for the game today. So thank you for joining us, my friends, my fellow viewers, my fellow wizards and witches. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. I hope everyone had a magical time. I hope everyone is ready as we will be continuing our first chapter of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. We'll wait a couple more moments. Good morning. Oh, my friends, we have a special witch with a special birthday today. Oh, look, it showed up. You can see Kathy Schmidt. <laughs> oh. Good morning. Wow, I made it out of the way. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Let's transform and fit everything to the screen. There we go. Oh, and the chat box just needs to move. I'll move everything around. We'll make this perfect. So our Kathy Schmidt in, uh, in the chat there, our special witch, is a very special day for her today because it is her birthday today, friends. So later on, I will, of course, be singing a little happy birthday. Of course, you know I have to, so. <laughs> I'm doing very well today, Alex. Thank you so much for joining. How are you today? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Oh, I gotta move all these things around. I'll figure all this out one day. But in the meantime, I'm lucky to have friends like you who will hang out with me, even though I don't quite have it all worked out. <laughs> so you'll notice the channel points, friends. We'll get to those throughout the game. There's some fun things through that we'll be using those for. We've got our five special sounds of the day from Harry Potter. But we will go ahead and jump back in now at this point. It looks like we'll go ahead and jump into Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And we will continue with our journey. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. I thought that was obvious. I thought it was, you know, simple. A good sound choice for the stream. So, <laughs> all right, friends. When last we left, Albus Dumbledore had arrived on the street. Albus Dumbledore didn't seem to realize that he had just arrived in a street where everything from his name to his boots was unwelcome. He was busy rummaging in his cloak looking for something, but he did seem to realize he was being watched, because he looked up suddenly at the cat, which was still staring at him from the other end of the street. For some reason, the sight of the cat seemed to amuse him. He chuckled and muttered, I should have known. He found what he was looking for in his inside pocket. It seemed to be a silver cigarette lighter. He flicked it open, held it up in the air, and clicked it. The nearest street lamp went out with a little pop. He clicked it again. The next lamp flickered into darkness. Twelve times he clicked the put-outer, until the only lights left on the whole street were two tiny pinpricks in the distance, which were the eyes of the cat watching him. If anyone looked out of their window now, even beady-eyed Mrs. Dursley, they wouldn't be able to see anything that was happening down on the pavement. Dumbledore slipped the putter outer back inside his cloak and set off down the street toward number four, where he sat down on the wall next to the, the cat. He didn't look at it, but after a moment, he spoke to it. Fancy seeing you here, Professor McGonagall. He turned to smile at the tabby, but it had gone. Instead, he was smiling at a rather severe-looking woman who was wearing square glasses, exactly the shape of the markings the cat had had around its eyes. She, too, was wearing a cloak, an emerald one. Her black hair was drawn into a tight bun. She looked distinctly ruffled. How did you know it was me? she asked. My dear professor, I've never seen a cat sit so stiffly. You'd be stiff if you'd been sitting on a brick wall all day, said Professor McGonagall. All day? When you could have been celebrating? 
I must have passed a dozen feasts and parties on my way here. Professor McGonagall sniffed angrily. Oh, yes, everyone's celebrating all right, she said impatiently. You'd think we'd be a bit more careful now. Even the muggles have noticed something's going on. It was on their news. She jerked her head back at the Dursley's dark living room. I heard it. Flocks of owls shooting stars. Well, they're not completely stupid. They're bound to notice something. Shooting stars down in Kent. I'll bet that was Diddly Stiggle. He never had much sense. You can't blame them, said Dumbledore gently. We've had precious little to celebrate for eleven years. I know that, said Professor McGonagall irritably. But that's no reason to lose our heads. People are down being downright careless out on the streets in broad daylight, not even dressed in mogul clothes swapping the rumours. She drew a sharp she threw a sharp sideways glance at Dumbledore, here, as though hoping he was going to tell her something, but he didn't, so she went on. The fine thing it would be if on the very day you know who seems to have disappeared at last, the Muggles find out about us all. I suppose he really has gone, Dumbledore? It certainly seems so, said Dumbledore. We have much to be thankful for. Would you care for a lemon drop? A what? A lemon drop. They're a kind of muggle sweet I'm rather fond of. No, thank you, said Professor McGonagall, coldly as though she didn't think this was the moment for lemon drops. As I say, even if you know who has gone, my dear Professor, surely a sensible person like yourself can call him by his name? All this you-know-who nonsense. For eleven years, I have been trying to persuade people to call him by his proper name. Voldemort, Professor McGonagall flinched, but Dumbledore, who was unsticking two lemon drops, seemed to not notice. Hi, Kaylin. Oh, thank you for joining us for Storytime with Food. You're one of the coolest witches out there. No doubt. Everyone knows this. It gets so confusing if we keep saying you-know-who... I have never seen any reason to be frightened of saying Voldemort's name. I know you haven't, said Professor McGonagall, sounding half exasperated, half admiring. But you're different. Everyone knows you're the only one you know who... All right. Voldemort was frightened of. You flatter me, said Dumbledore calmly. Voldemort had powers I will never have, only because you're too, well, noble to use them. It's lucky it's dark. I haven't blushed so much since Madame Pomfrey told me she liked my new earmuffs. Professor McGonagall shot a sharp look at Dumbledore and said, The owls are nothing next to the rumours that are flying around. You know that everyone's saying? About why he disappeared? About why it finally stopped him? It seemed that Professor McGonagall had reached the point she was most anxious to discuss. The real reason she had been right waiting on a cold, hard wall all day for neither a cat nor as a woman had she fixed Dumbledore with such a piercing stare as she did now. It was plain that whatever everyone was saying, she was not going to believe it until Dumbledore told her it was true. Dumbledore, however, was choosing another lemon drop and did not answer. What they're saying, she pressed on, is that last night Voldemort turned up in Godric's Hollow. He went to find the Potters. The rumor is that Lily and James Potter are... are that dead. Dumbledore bowed his head. Professor McGonagall gasped. <laughs> Lily and James. I can't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. Oh, Albus. Dumbledore reached out and patted her on the shoulder. I know. I know. He said heavily. Professor McGonagall's voice trembled as she went on. That's not all. The Serian, he tried to kill the Potter's son, Harry. But he couldn't. He couldn't kill that little boy. No one knows why or how, but they're saying that when he couldn't kill Harry Potter, Voldemort's power somehow broke, and that's why he's gone. Dumbledore nodded grimly. It, it's true, faltered Professor McGonagall. After all that's done, all the people he's killed, he couldn't kill a little boy. It's just astounding, of all the things to stop him. But how in the heaven's name did Harry survive? I guess, I can only guess, said Dumbledore. We may never know. Professor McGonagall pulled out a lace handkerchief and dabbed her eyes beneath her spectacles. Dumbledore gave a great sniff as he took a golden watch from his pocket and examined it. It was a very odd watch. Hello to all our friends, our fellow witches and wizards. Thanks for joining us this morning. 
Dumbledore gave a great sniff as he took a golden watch from his pocket and examined it. It was a very odd watch. It had 12 hands, but no numbers. Instead, little planets were moving around the edge. It must have made sense to Dumbledore, though, because he put it back in his pocket and said, Hagrid's late. I suppose it was he who told you I'd be here, by the way. Yes, said Professor McGonagall. And I don't suppose you're going to tell me why you're here, of all places? I've come to bring Harry to his aunt and uncle. They're the only family he has left now. You mean, you don't mean, you can't mean the people who live here? cried Professor McGonagall, jumping to her feet and pointing at number four. Dumbledore, you can't. I've been watching them all day. You couldn't find two people who are less like us. And they've got this son. I saw him kicking his mother all the way up the street, screaming for squeeze. Harry Potter, come and live here? It's the best place for him, said Dumbledore firmly. His aunt and uncle will be able to explain everything to him when he's older. I've written them a letter. A letter? repeated Professor McGonagall faintly, sitting back on the wall. Really, Dumbledore, you think you can explain all this in a letter? These people will never understand him. He'll be famous. A legend. I wouldn't be surprised if today was known as Harry Potter Day in the future. There will be books written about Harry. Every child in our world will know his name. Exactly, said Dumbledore, looking very seriously over the top of his half-moon glasses. It would be enough to turn any boy's head famous before he can talk or walk. Famous for something he won't remember. Can't you see how much better off he'll be growing up away from all that until he's ready to take it? Professor McGonagall opened her mouth, changed her mind, swallowed, and then said, Yes, yes, you're right, of course. How is the boy going getting here, Dumbledore? She eyed his cloak suddenly as though she might be she thought he might be hiding Harry underneath it. <laughs> Thank you, my love. Breakfast. Hello, friends. Thanks for joining us. We're in the middle of chapter one. <laughs> Hagrid's, Hagrid's bringing him. You think it wise to trust Hagrid with something as important as this? I would trust Hagrid with my life, said Dumbledore. I'm not saying his heart isn't in the right place, said Professor McGonagall grudgingly. But you can't pretend he's not careless. He does tend to... What was that? A low rumbling sound had broken the silence around them. It grew steadily louder as they looked up and down the street for some sign of a headlight. It swelled to a roar as they both looked up at the sky, and a huge motorcycle fell out of the air and landed on the road in front of them. If the motorcycle was huge, it was nothing to the man sitting astride it. He was almost twice as tall as a normal man and at least five times as wide. He looked simply too big to be allowed and so wild. Long tangles of bushy black hair and beard hid most of his face, his hands the size of trash can lids, and his feet in their leather boots were like baby dolphins. In his vast muscular arms, he was holding a bundle of blankets. Oh, for breakfast, I've got some bagel balls with cream cheese inside them. My fiance cooked those up for me. Delicious. Yes, food is necessary for story time. I hope all my friends out there have some water. Important to stay hydrated. And if you're out there in the chat, feel free to say hello and join us this morning. <clears throat> Let's see. Did you do... Ah, right there. Hagrid, said Dumbledore, sounding relieved. At last. And where did you get that motorcycle? Borrowed it, Professor Dumbledore, sir, said the giant, climbing carefully off the motorcycle as he spoke. Young Sirius Black lent it to me. I've got him, sir. No problem, was there? No, sir. House was almost destroyed, but I got him out all right before the muggles started swarming around. He fell asleep as we was flying over Bristol. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall bent forward over the bundle of blankets. Inside, just visible was a baby boy, fast asleep, under a tuft of jet black hair over his forehead. They could see a curiously shaped cut, like a lightning bolt. Is that where? whispered Professor McGonagall. Yes, said Dumbledore. He'll have that scar forever. Couldn't you do something about it, Dumbledore? Even if I could, I wouldn't. Scars come in handy. I have one above my left knee that is a perfect map of the London underground. Well, give him here, Hagrid. We'd better get this over with. 
Dumbledore looked Harry, took Harry in his arms and turned toward the Dursley's house. Could I, could I take a white worm, sir? said Hagrid. He bent his great shaggy head over Harry and gave him what must have been a very scratchy, whiskery kiss. Then suddenly Hagrid let out a howl like a wounded dog. Shh, hissed Professor McGonagall. You like the muggles? So sorry, sobbed Hagrid, taking out a large spotted handkerchief and burying his face in it. But I can't stand it. Lily and James did. And poor Harry does love to live with muggles. Yes, yes. It's all very sad. But get a grip on yourself, Hagrid, and it will be found. Professor McGonagall whispered, patting Hagrid gingerly on the arm as Dumbledore stepped over the low garden wall and walked to the front door. He laid Harry gently on the doorstep, took a letter out of his cloak, tucked it inside Harry's blankets, and then came back to the other two. For a full minute, the three of them stood and looked at the little bundle. Hagrid's shoulders shook. Professor McGonagall blinked furiously. And the twinkling light that was usually shown from Dumbledore's eyes seemed to have gone out. Well, said Dumbledore finally, that's that. We've no business staying here. We may as well go and join the celebrations. Yes, said Hagrid in a very muffled voice. I'll be taken serious as Mike back. Good night, Professor McGonagall. Professor Dumbledore, sir. Wiping his streaming eyes on his jacket sleeve, Hagrid swung himself onto the motorcycle and kicked the engine into life. With a roar, it rose into the air and off into the night. I shall see you soon, I expect, Professor McGonagall, said Dumbledore, nodding to her. Professor McGonagall blew her nose in reply. Dumbledore turned and walked back down the street. On the corner, he stopped and took out the silver putter outer. He clicked it once, and twelve balls of light sped back to their street lamps on that privet drive glowed suddenly orange and he could make out a tabby cat slinking around the corner at the other end of the street he could just see the bundle of blankets on the step of number four good luck harry he murmured he turned on his heel and with a swish of his cloak he was gone a breeze ruffled the neat hedges of privet drive which lay silent and tidy under the inky sky the very last place you would expect astonishing things to happen Harry Potter rolled over inside his blankets without waking up. One small hand closed to, on the letter beside him, and he slept on, not knowing he was special, not knowing he was famous, not knowing he would be woken in a few hours' time by Mrs. Dursley's scream as she opened the front door to put out the milk bottles, nor that he would spend the next few weeks being prodded and pinched by his cousin Dudley. He couldn't know that at this very moment people meeting in secret all over the country were holding up their glasses and saying in hushed voices, To Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Well, good morning, my friends. Hello, hello. Oh, you got ramen, Kaylin. Delicious. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for joining us in the chat this morning for our little finishing up of chapter one of harry potter and now i think it's time we move ourselves over to the game to the game all right i hope everyone had a wonderful weekend i hope everyone has had a wonderful morning as well taking care of themselves to have some water I've got my Harry Potter to help us out. Good morning, Nikki Noob. Everyone, if you take a take a chance and look at the uh, channel points, we've got some uh, some special channel points up for the day. We have a special action with each of them. All right, and uh, I guess if you play them, you'll 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 see, and you'll have to try to figure it out and let me know. Before we get started, I'm gonna take a delicious bite of this bagel. Mm -hmm. Kalen, I've got great news. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, when last we left. Oh, just continue story. Good. Here we go. Ooh, you'll notice above me, we got our follower goal. We've got five days to get 25 people. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Okay. When we last left. Yes, we were in the Quidditch stands. Okay. When last we last. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full, Nick. 
when last we left our heroes. I have my rainbow sherbet fuel, G fuel. I've never had G fuel. I've seen a lot of advertisements for it though. 105, wait a minute, two of four, two of five, okay. Let's just get all of these it looks like. Okay, it's nice when the game tells us that we have a certain amount to get. All right, there we go, four of five. Wait a minute, okay. What's up there? Can I, do you see that red, do you see the quaffle? Can I do anything with that? No. Oh no, okay, student in peril. Yay, five of five. Who'd we get, who'd we get? Yes, look at that, we got Katie Bell. I knew we'd get something if we got all those flags. Okay, I see a student in peril. Suit certain characters can dig up glowing patches of soil. <laughs> oh, <coughs> pardon me, excuse me. Hmm. Crump steak. Good morning. We're gonna start the morning out with some squats. Ah, gotta stay healthy, kids. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's our ten squats. Look at that, we done ten squats. Okay, okay, here we go. Wait, can I dig this up? This was I want. It was glowing. Harry can apparently do that. Okay, but this seems. Okay, wait, wait. What is that? Who is that? That's Dumbledore. Do I need to be Dumbledore? Oh no, oh it is very laggy, I see that. Oh. I see. Stream is experiencing issues. Okay. I am sorry about that, my friends. Let us see. That is more bit rate than I think I wanted to try to use thank you for letting me know let's see I tried to turn the quality of the stream up because I was watching it back Perhaps try lowering my graphics settings in the game. Do you mean on the PlayStation rump steak? Because I'm not playing on my computer. Um, I did try to turn it uh, up. I tried to, I tried to make the quality a little better, and I don't know if I was able to do it quite right. So let me jump over. I have a, I have a thing that uh, you can use with Twitch that tells you how to put everything. Um, pardon me, my friends. Thank you, witches and wizards, for sticking with us here. Um, let's see. Did it do? Um, I'm not sure if that's it. The broadcast recommendations. Nope. Let me see. There's that. Okay, so I need to turn that back down to 3000. All of this is all technical and new to me. Still learning. Okay. And then what else? Um, 3000 frame rate. Uncommonly high. Okay. And we'll check this again. No, I see that it's very choppy, my friends. Thank you so much for sticking with us. <laughs> Where's the PlayStation? Yeah, I'm trying to. I think I need to lower the quality of my stream, unfortunately. But that's okay. And let's try that high setting. Um, 
Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on it and see if it's still choppy now. Issues with our own broadband. Quite possibly, I am plugged in with an Ethernet cable. So let's see here. Click on a stat. Let's see. Minor issues, it says now. Audio is very clear. Mr. Faustus Cody, thank you. Good morning. I appreciate you chiming in. Audio is clear. It's only video issues. Hmm. That is uh, not, not my favorite things. That's okay. Hopefully we'll be able to figure it out. And I hope I don't have to end the stream to make any of the changes. Um, oh, that's the other thing. There we are. Okay, so now I need to reduce that down to 1280 by 720. Bam. Okay. Those should be the changes that I think I make. Wow, skip frames. 84% skip frames over the last two minutes. My goodness. My goodness, my goodness. That is not good numbers. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully it'll be going better now, my friends. I made some changes. I'm going to give it a moment, and I'm going to have uh, another bite of my delicious breakfast. Is it still being weird, Kaylin? Thank you for letting me know, everyone. I do appreciate everyone trying to...